All right, so here's, here's why we start usually with any client. Um, so when a client first comes to us, a lot of times what we hear is, hey, I've got this idea, or hey, I built this website, what do you think? Or I want to build this website, I want to sell X, Y, Z. And one of the first things I often say as I'm kind of talking with them and trying to figure out if they're a good fit for how we can help them is, you know, let's take a few steps back and let's understand, let's look at the business, let's look at what do you know about the brand as it is going to hit the market, how do you see that all playing out? And usually what I find is there's a lot of question marks. So what we do as we get into this first phase, which we call vision, so we, we basically want to envision this brand and kind of hit some of these points and you know, we do a lot of research and write big fancy documents and all that. But this is basically the crux of what's in that, which from day one of the conversation with this potential client who you know, eventually becomes, you know, does become a client, I'm working with them or an account manager, but usually me as brand, kind of the head of brand strategy at our agency and working directly with clients. You know, I'm trying to drive them and help them figure it out and help us help them figure it out and you know we provide a lot of insight along the way so the first thing that we want to do is we want to figure out the why the how and the what so you might look at this and go cool I've got that in my business plan I'm, I'm good one of the things that we do though is a lot of business plan approaches start with what and then you kind of define your how and then define your why so because we specialize in helping brands really connect with millennials and you know, I almost don't even want to say market to millennials because you know, we're all millennials in this room, I'm on the very upper end of that, but uh, millennials are a very different animal from all the generations past. And you've probably heard that a million times. You know, I'm not gonna go into all the stuff that's out there and there's negative media and positive media, and yada, yada, yada. But, we basically want to help our clients create something that is of value to us as millennials and, and a lot of times kind of learn how to talk to us and how to, I guess, market without marketing and how to let us know something's going on without advertising it to us per se. So when we're defining the why, the how, and the what, the reason that we start with why is because why is a critical piece of brand and it's a this is an approach that we use in all of our brand development process, which is understanding first, you know, not the what, which if you look at, say, Dell, I like to use these examples. So you look at Dell, the computer brand, and you look at Apple. Apple does an amazing job, uh, and, they, and they have for many, many years of starting with why. Why is this going to change my life, this product? What? is kind of like the approach that a lot of corporations, big companies you see make the mistake of and particularly make the mistake with trying to reach millennials of saying, hey, you know, we sell, you know, good but cheap computers that every man can afford. Uh, you know, or we got a sale, it's $9.99, whoop de doo Like it's, it's not compelling. But if you actually start with how you present your brand to anyone from investors to potential clients, to potential customers, starting there is far more powerful. And you can look at, um, it's at the end of this presentation, but our site's highflyfbrands.com and you can kind of go through the story. If you follow the trail there, you'll kind of understand we, we do it for ourselves. So we're not just here to build websites and, and make you know brand marks and create brand strategy documents. There's a bigger reason that we do it that we feel is more compelling than, than that. You know, and that's that we really want to make a positive impact because we believe that you know us as millennials I mean we are the we're the future of the decades to come I mean, there's no arguing that so so if you want to look a little bit more into defining why how and what and in that order look up uh, Simon Sinek there's a TED talk his last name is spelled S-I-N-E-K I gotta write this on the board I've written on a, a board in a while so here you go S-I-N-E-K, and he wrote a little book called Start With Why. Now there's a TED Talk out there you can find on YouTube, 
and it summarizes his book in about 17 minutes. So if you don't have time to read a book, other than the textbooks that you're dealing with, that's a great way to get the crux of what I'm saying and be able to utilize it in what you're doing. So the next piece of what we do then in a nutshell is we define the positioning of the brand. So I, with a business plan, you guys, you have that in there I would assume, right? So you're figuring out, okay, so like we had a client that came to us years ago and said, I want to sell nutritional supplements. We're, you know, a couple of bodybuilders, uh, bodybuilder types, you know, you know, one of them was like getting a master's degree in whatever field that is that deals with like the actual science of how that works. Um, so we said, great, let's back up a little bit though. So you want to have a website that sells nutritional supplements, but what about the brand? It, it, you know, could it be a lifestyle brand? Could it be more powerful than just another bodybuilding.com or something like that, which is just a giant, you know, warehouse of, of deals, that's all they, you know. I, I would argue that bodybuilding.com, though successful, and you can be successful and not start with why, but, you know, that's not really a lifestyle brand that necessarily resonates with people uh, in the way that we build our clients' brands to do. So, do they have good deals and make lots of money? Sure. So does Amazon. Amazon is not a lifestyle brand, and that's okay. But when we define the positioning, we just want to understand where does this sit in the realm of what's already out there. So with those guys, for that example, we eventually went down a path of, okay, well, what if we positioned this brand in such a way that it was for the millennials, you know, the older end millennials that are coming out of college, they were able to work out in college because they had time. Now they're in the working world, time becomes more and more sparse, you're working a full-time job. And what about those people? Because bodybuilding.com is really not typically those people that we want to target, but there's a lot more of these typical everyday millennials out there that might be interested, they might, you know, have do protein powders, et cetera, et cetera, and not get all crazy with it. And bodybuilding is more of a, bodybuilding.com is more of an extremist brand. You know, like that's you're really getting crazy and you're into getting, you know, ripped and jacked and all those good things. So we kind of went down a road of how could we position this a little bit more approachable? And that played out in the brand, in uh, what we eventually came up with, photography, how we did the photography. Um, all the models that we picked for people that, you know, I would say pretty much everybody in this room could relate to. You know, there's no Hulk characters in there. You know, some of the guys are more cut than the others, but, you know, normal dudes, normal gals. 